So just from that second move, inhale, exhale. Now you change your weight to your right leg as you breathe in again, somewhere on that, that stroke, you breathe in. Now when you change your weight, it's very important not to go bob up and down. Now from here on in, almost always, your head's going to be at this level, uh, going like that. It must never bob up and down, especially when you walk. There are times when you're doing moves like this, of course, when it, the, the physical thing of the, of, the, of the posture makes you have to move your head down. But for the most part, when you're just walking through doing movements, your, your knees will remain bent. So if you change your weight, you see, you change it, keeping your head at that one level, not like up, down, the way we normally walk. So from this position, you change your weight and keep your head at that level. Chin is pulled in lightly. In breath. Pick up your left heel. This is called cat walking. Now you have to step straight down the middle. Don't do this. You're going to take a step simply to the north like this and place your foot where it wants to go to naturally. You don't let it come across like this. This is the easy thing to do, and most people tend to do this, but then you're not going to get a correct what's called a bow stance. The bow stance is the most common stance. There are three widths for your stances. That's the bow stance, shoulder width. When we get to it, this is the heel stance width, and this is the toe stance width. No, no direction, no uh, width. So from here, we've done a bow stance. I'll just show you a bow stance here. It's always good to maybe put a piece of wood going down here by, by your foot. And when you step, keep it touching the wood once you've stepped, you see? So that ensures that you haven't brought your left foot across at all. Now look what my foot's doing. It's going yang. See how it's bent? Bent with the toes pushing in the ground. This activates a point called kidney one or the bubbling well point. Now as you step forward, it, it walks like a cat. The toes are now concave. See how they're concave? So it goes like this, concave. Now as you put your heel down, you stretch your leg out, open your toes, so it's yang again, so it's gone yang, yin, yang. And just don't put your foot down where it is, but just let it fall. So there's going to be a slight backward motion, isn't there? Because it's coming, it's stretched and it's coming down to, up to down. Don't, if you stretch out like that, you're going to get too much weight. You, you, you're actually committing yourself to the posture without being able to pull your foot back. Now, I, I can't step back now if there's danger without first pushing my weight back and put, putting my foot back. A cat does this. When a cat walks, it'll place its foot, no matter, even if it's running very quickly. If there's water or something, whoop, it'll go and change direction very, very quickly. So that's what we have to do. We have to go, place the heel down exactly where it is to the north, and still be able to pick it up. If you can pick your heel straight off the ground, then you're doing it correctly. But if you go like this, see, I can't pick my heel up off the ground without having first pushed my weight back. So that's a bow stance. It comes like this, scrunched under, place your heel down, roll your toes out. Now roll forward onto your front foot, turned in ever so slightly. See the angle of the front foot. It's not dead straight here. The back foot shouldn't have to come around. It's turned only 45 degrees from the beginning. If you turn it too far, you'll want to drag it around. But if it's just 45 degrees, then you won't want to drag it around. Now, see, it's not straight here, the front foot. It's turned in slightly, about an inch to the right. That is a correct bow stance. It's actually turned in slightly. That's with, a lot, with most martial arts, is, is this, this sort of a step. Now, you'll notice that the back leg <coughs> is not dead straight either. It's not like this. It's slightly bent. There's 70% of the weight on the front leg, 30% of the weight on the rear leg. This is a correct bow stance. See how the back is vertical. It's not leaning forward like this, nor is it leaning backwards. It's just uh, on the waist, and it's vertical. Now, when you have a, hold a correct bow stance, to know that you're doing it correctly, you'll feel a slight pulling sensation down here on what's called the right qua, if you're doing it with your left foot forward and vice versa. Because your hips have tucked under and they've turned directly to the front along with your waist. There's a difference between your waist and your hips. Your hips are everything below the sacrum. The sacrum's this big flat bone at the base of your back just before the coccyx. Everything 
including the sacrum and below, is regarded as the hips. The hips can't turn very far. They can turn a little bit, but not very far. Everything above the sacrum is your waist. The, the hips can turn this far, see? Now the waist can, can, the shoulders and the waist can turn a whole lot more, you see? So you have to distinguish between the two. The hips are to the front at this point. That's a correct bow stance. Now, that's what we're going to be doing now from this posture of block to the right. So you breathe in as you change your weight. Pick up your left foot, roll it, step straight down the middle, open your toes, place your heel. That's an in-breath. You haven't moved your arms. You only move your arms when, with the body weight behind it. So to do this would be incorrect. That's incorrect. I've lost it already. I might as well not do that movement. So from here, you roll your left foot up, Step forward, open it, place it exactly where it is, turn it toes in slightly, and as you roll your weight forward, your left hand is going to just come up in front as you breathe out, and your right hand is going to go back down almost to your right hip as you breathe out. You'll notice that the left hip now is right in my centre, about upper chest height, and the right is down on my right hip. This is called pung, or to ward off slantingly upwards, chin pulled in. Now, have a look at what the hands do. The hands, the left fingers, cut through the right uh, dragon mouth, like this. And then they come to the front. Tai Chi is an illusion. It looks, you might look as if my, ha my hands are going like this, this or something. But really, the hands almost always stay always in the center, or they simply do up and down motions. Now, all my hands are going to do from this posture is simply this. My hands are simply going to come up and down. That's all they're going to do. That's all they're doing. But it's the body turning. See, obviously, I'm turning my body when I step. When I step to the front, to the north, my body, hips and shoulders are turning to the front. So it looks as if my arms are doing this. They're not opening at all. They're staying in those relative positions and the left hand is coming up and the wrist is staying in the centre. Elbow down on your, on your out breath. From, we still haven't finished grasping swallow's tail. This is called pung. Now here you're going to do the exact opposite movement than we did when we did this movement here just a minute, just, just a minute ago. So from here there are three things that happen. Your right palm relaxes and moves through. I'll turn this way just to show you how it moves. It moves through underneath the left palm, which turns down to meet it. And now the both palms are again on top of each other, the exact opposite of what we've just done. That's the first thing that happens. You inhale on this movement as well. You also pick up your right heel and turn slightly to the right, to the northeast. Now, as you turn to the northeast, your head only turns to the northeast, but your eyes look out the corner of your eyes to the east. Inhale. Now, you pick your right foot up. This is also, so again, important so as to get a correct bow stance. You pick your right foot right up off the ground and place your heel exactly where it was. Stretch it out. Again, pick it up. Stretch it out. Open your toes and place your heel exactly where it was. Now, as you roll forward, it's a little bit like the move we just did, except the left hand's going to stay where it is and flex. You roll forward onto your right leg. Your right hand comes up in front of you like you're holding a ball, and the left hand flexes lightly in, in, in back of it. Now, you notice I can't get my waist around to the front, my hips rather, because my back foot's still out there. So the very last thing that happens is, as you exhale, see how the left toes have dragged around. Never, ever do this, ever. The left toes drag around and point out to the northeast. See how the hands are held? Like you're holding a little ball in front. If you put your hands together, they do that. Like a little ball. And you're facing to the, to the east now. Again, the front foot is turned in just slightly about one inch. So I'll just go over that from the pung movement. Breathe in, and 
breathe out as your back toe comes around 45 degrees. Now from here, you're simply going to change the position of your hands. The left hand is going to turn up and the right hand is going to turn down. By the way, there are five levels of doing this form. Not different, just like different ways of doing it. All the movements are the same, but there are just different, more advanced ways of doing it. This is the second way. I feel that people are, are intelligent enough to take the second way of doing the Taiji form. The first way is just really, it's like up or doing all the wrong things. Down, out, across. So it's really, really basic, but I think you can take it straight on to the second level. So the movements become a little bit more advanced as you, as you progress through the levels. Now from here, your left hand turns up and your right hand turns down. You see how they've changed state. A change of state is either from this to this or this back to this. Your right hand will change to a yang-shaped hand while your left hand changes to a yin-shaped hand. Now th this is what not to do. You mustn't move your hands. This is what most people tend to do. They move their hands like this. They rotate the hands. You leave your left hand exactly where it is and simply do that. You leave your right hand exactly where it is and simply do that. That's a nothing breath. If you brought your hands together, the left hand could fit nicely inside of the right hand through the, through the, the dragon mouth point again, like, like so. And they're both on this flat plane here. So they're not like this or like this, they're both on this flat, sort of a 45 degree plane going down to the ground. So that's your out breath, this is a nothing breath. Now you're going to do a movement called roll back or sit back. You simply drop your hands like this, that's all you're going to do, but remember not to lose the width, the fist distance under each axilla. All you're going to do, I'll do it to the front just to show you, you're going to turn your hands over, then you're simply going to drop them like that to just above your hip. Now again, it looks like your arms are doing a pull backwards, but it's not. It's the body. It's an illusion. It's the body doing the movements for you. So left hand up, right hand down. Sit back onto your back leg and turn your hips and your waist 45 degrees to the left to point into the north northeast corner. Sit back, your hands drop down. Breathe in. It looks as if the hands have pulled. They've just come down though, but it's the body doing the work for you. Now you rotate your left hand keeping those relative shapes, yang and yin, and place your left mounts, here are the mounts here, just on top of your right wrist, just here. The mounts go there. Now as you bring your weight back to the east again, onto your front leg, you release, you change state. See how the hands will change state? Both hands will change state together here. So you're doing a strike bah, to the front. So you bring it up in the same arc that it came down. Don't go like this, or a lot of people do this. They bring it up and then push. That's incorrect. Everything in Taiji is spirals. So you turn back to the east and slowly release both palms to chest height. like so. See how the fingers are pointing straight upwards? It's not like this. The palm is placed on the hand. Now the correct position placing of this hand is such. Just here, there's a little hard bony area here and here. That's a weapon that we use in the martial art of Taiji. You place those both together and you get your left hand then going a little bit across your hand. If you put it too much across your hand, you'll damage these little bones, fine bones across the back of the hand when you actually do the martial application. Or if you put it across your right across your wrist, you will, by the same token, you'll damage your wrist. It must be just a little bit across your palm and a little bit across your wrist, like this. And breathe out. 